Welcome home, everybody. Yet again, another session at Shakers in our kitchen. Beautiful summer day here in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, so I am inspired to do a couple of fine island cuisine dishes that I have experienced myself at different points and different times, and I sure wish I was on an island right now, but we we'll do the best we can. So these are, uh, there's a commonality that goes on here, and each one of these dishes uses fresh seafood. So the first is going to be a lomi lomi. Lomi lomi is one of the big ceremonial dishes in Hawaii, and it's made with salmon and uh, a few interesting little vegetables and a very light citrus component that goes along with that. It's a cold cure process, and truly it is a ceviche. So um, in the last couple of years, 15, 20 years, we've experienced things from Central and South America uh, that are ceviches. Before that, it was pretty much unknown, at least in the Midwest. But in Hawaii, it's been done forever and a day. And again, this is one of those things. So to begin, uh, we're gonna use uh, the citric acid that comes off of uh, limes primarily and have a little bit of orange in there as well. Uh, as we get into another dish, we're going to be doing a scorch conch. Scorch conch is the national food of the Bahamas. Uh, if you have a chance to go there, certainly down uh, in NASA, you can find yourself just at any of the waterways and they will have this beautiful shell, this conch that comes out that from B-grade movies, people be blown in a ooh kind of a thing. It's really wild, but they also take this fresh uh, snail, they pull this out and they score it, which means they, they beat the bejeebers out of this thing. And they use different chili peppers and then they put it in a plastic bag and they serve it to you in a plastic bag. That is the authentic Bahamian scorch conch. You also get this in Key West, but I've never seen it in a plastic bag. Last thing, I'm gonna do something Jamaican. I'm going to do a, uh, a snapper, and I'm gonna use escovitch process on that. And if you think about a ceviche being primarily acids, we take that same concept, but we're gonna use those to cook with. So we're taking the snapper, the fish, any firm fleshed white fish works as well. And we're gonna be sauteing that in the acid. It's a quick, quick process. Um, almost like we used to do here at Shakers 25 years ago in the uh, Allegri adobo cooking style, which is a fusion of uh, both uh, Central American style with some Philippine type things and brought that together. And this is not that far removed from that, but it is again one of the national dishes this time of Jamaica. Hope you enjoy this series. Uh, anytime, of course, you have questions, feel free to call us at Shakers. You are, would do yourself and us a big favor if you subscribe to the Shakers channel and we hope you enjoy this. Okay, so Lomi Lomi first. Gonna kick this off. Some limes. Roll the limes first to freeze the membranes, gives you more juice, which is what we're after here. This is rice wine vinegar. Any brand works just as well as anything else. These are simple scallions. Same type of thing you get really anywhere in the world. So we're just gonna get these cut down into really fine little pieces. The same as you would a chiffonade, but a chiffonade generally is referred to for leaves of uh, different herbs. Like anything else in life, there's more than one way to do something and you will come across people that have lived in Hawaii or cooked in Hawaii that might say that this needs a different component. This at least is uh, the way that I've had it and we've cooked it here for years and at one point I had a um, partner who is Hawaiian in a marketing business and this is what he taught me to do so this is how we did it. Real simple to begin with, Roma tomatoes. Other tomatoes have different attributes this is nice because it has just the right amount of juiciness to the uh, salad portion and it's not, it's not overly solid. It, it just has a real nice touch to it and it holds together along with the acid. There's some type of things you get into like some of the beef steaks or something, uh, some of the heirlooms that just aren't going to work as well. Romas I think are, are exactly what I'm looking for at least. So you get into uh, much of the produce in Hawaii is just like being in Costa Rica to some degree because they have these marvelous volcanic soils and, and the produce is amongst the best in the world. I'm really partial to Costa Rica, 
but I have to say that Hawaii, uh, being volcanic islands, is right behind that. So simple, Roma tomato. I'm gonna let this set up for just a moment. While that's taking place, clean our bench. Get our fish. This is the same cobbler for salmon that we've had in for the past week or so. And uh, I am just thrilled at the quality of this. Every year, again, in my mind, you've heard me talk about this, but as the best salmon on the face of the planet. I've had it both ways in Hawaii where you've had it both skin on and skin off. Uh, I'm gonna do this as a skin on. Uh, it has obviously You've been scaled already, so all we have to deal with is just the flesh and the skin. Um, I think that skin, anytime you have the opportunity to eat it, is really beneficial. There are so many qualities that go along with it nutritionally that uh, people, and again, our cultures have a tendency to, to miss. So those of you who are familiar with eating poke, poke is a Hawaiian dish, which really is what this is all about. You can have any size portion you like, a little small, a little finer. Uh, generally, you know, fits on your fork or spoon a little bit better. Using chopsticks, all the better for you. And you see it's already starting to change color a little bit. Get just a little bit more of our rice wine vinegar in here. And we're gonna let this set up, but before we do that, we're gonna take a little bit of wakame. Wakame is a seaweed salad. It's generally six different types of seaweed and they are um, tossed with sesame oil and sesame seeds. And uh, this isn't always done in Hawaii, but I like to do it. I think it just adds a little more interesting texture to it. And it certainly gives it a much different color as well. So I like to make my lomi lomi uh, at least half an hour ahead of time because that's when the flavors really meld and work together. That's also when the acids have had their opportunity to work on the fish. When you're using a fresh ocean going fish, there is not really a concern um, for any of the uh, problems that you might find with freshwater fish. There are very few worms, there are very few things of that nature. You have to have great faith in your purveyor, of course. Uh, the fish monger is going to get you the right product because he wants to keep you happy and keep you as a customer. So um, find the right fish monger, get the right fish, and you won't have any concerns whatsoever uh, as far as its freshness and as far as it's being safe to eat. Again, this is going to set up, we're going to put it inside the cooler because that's the real place to have fish. Welcome back to Shakers. Here we are. We're picking up again with our island cuisine. This is the aforementioned scorched conch that we're going to be doing. So again, imagine, if you will, this big shell that you pull from the bottom of your dugout canoe and you blow into. This is what's inside of that. This is, it's a type of snail, really. It's a mollusk, and they're wonderful. Uh, known as a aphrodisiac as well. They have remarkable properties to them. But first, what we're going to do is put together our marinade. So. It's got a simple computer uh, components rather going on. It's going to be scotch bonnet chili peppers. It's going to be a little bit of habanero, some serrano, a little jalapeno because I want a variety of flavors as well. Some heat going on. We got uh, limes. I've got some lemon and some orange, and I've got a red onion here to play with. So simple red onion. You could dice this if you want to. I like to have just a little bit more presentation value, so I've got larger pieces going on that's going to be really bright and colorful as well. So, simply this into our mixing bowl. Serrano chilies. Again, this is how we teach people to cut in our kitchen here at Shakers is use the bridge of your fingers first. Keep your blade on the bench and you're not going to cut your fingertips off. That is something none, none of us want to happen. That is the serrano. This is the jalapeno. I'm gonna leave the seeds inside of this. Uh, there's some dishes that we will go ahead and core this first, but I kind of like this because this is the way I've had this in the islands. 
And again, they're slightly different styles everywhere you go in the Caribbean. Um, you get to Nassau, there is a large conch that's got to be 9 or 10 feet, maybe even 11 feet tall in the center of a circle as you drive past that. And it really kind of sets a tone for what they look at as being their national dish. So from this you can have either scorch conch, you can have conch fritters or uh, conch chowder and conch almost any way you want to have it. There's a restaurant called The Roundhouse and I've been there, it's a Casarinas uh, portion of the Bahamas and uh, I was there four or five separate times um, over the course of maybe two or three years and they finally let me in the kitchen uh, as a visiting chef to see what they were doing so I could pick up their secrets for their conch fritters. Uh, and of course, while I was there, I got the entire repertoire of everything they're doing with conch. So this is what they would do with their conch. So you notice I've got, again, we talked about the types of different chili peppers. So I've got some habanero in here. I've got the scotch bonnets in here. Uh, we've got jalapeno in here. We've got serrano in here. They have all their own unique flavor and it's all gonna come out here once it has a tendency to set up with, your chance to set up rather, with the, uh, the acid. So just like that. Just like in the Lomi Lomi dish we did with the Hawaiian style, it's the acid that really drives this. Otherwise, it's an uncooked food. So between the chili peppers and the acids, it will render it to a Kind of a pseudo quick way to look at that. It may happen, I've never heard of a bacterial infestation or parasite infestation taking place with conch. Anything, of course, that's natural uh, can happen. Now, Often, you will just find this with lime. I like to get some of the contrast that's going to take place with the lemon. The reason is because often in the islands you get a bitter orange. Um, in Milwaukee, I can't get the bitter orange, but what I can do is replicate the flavor profile by putting a little bit of lemon in there and then a little dollop of the tamarind as well. You can say, why am I using tamarind? Well, the answer is I can't get the sour orange that I want to get here by putting the tamarind in, which has that same flavor profile, it uh, works very nicely with the other citrus things, being the lemon, the lime, and the orange that we're going to have in in just a moment. and perhaps just one more lime. The number of limes that you use is, de is dependent upon and based on the amount of juice you get out of them. Sometimes limes are just juicier than others. Sometimes some species have a tendency to have more juice than others. These are Persian limes. Uh, they're not from Persia, that's just what they're called, are Persian limes. And this time of year, they're pretty juicy. Just mixing this around. Very basic. That's really what we're doing here. If you want to use uh, something like cayenne chili as opposed to these different varieties of chilies, you can do that as well. It really doesn't matter. Make it your own. All right, so that's setting up right now. And here we are. We're taking the actual conch itself, the mollusk, and we're taking the back of our blade and we're tenderizing it just like you would a steak or something else. as much fun as anything else can be. Now, this is tough. Make sure your blade is sharp, reduce accidents.
We're looking for something which is fork size or spoon size. The kind of thing you're walking down the beach and eating out of your plastic bag or I like to do this on boats as well. We do a lot of catering on boats and this is uh, incredibly simple to do. It's fast to set up and it really says the sea. Highly nutritious. So here we are at Shakers in Milwaukee having scorched conch, the national foodstuff of the Bahamas. And I suppose Key West as well really has uh, gotten a name for this over the course of time. This in the pie. Just as we did with our Lomi Lomi, the Hawaiian dish with the salmon, we're going to have this set up now. And again, the longer it sets up, the better. I wouldn't have this sit overnight, but I'd have this uh, in for 30 minutes to perhaps an hour or somewhere in that range. Longer if you want to. It's your dish. Again, embrace it and make it your own. Thank you. So I'll get back to this in the presentation in a few minutes, but this is what this is going to be looking like. Scorch conch, Bahamian style. Cool. Short break coming up now. Hey, everybody. Welcome back. We're uh, at the Shaker's Kitchen again doing a few Caribbean things. Um, and the next thing up is going to be the Jamaican Escovicha fish, fish that's cooked in acid as well. So again, we talked about the, uh, the difference between a ceviche, which is a cold cooked process, no heat applied, and this Escovicha, which is in essence the same spices, the same seasoning, and the same acid, but with heat. So what I'm going to do is begin this process first, then I'm going to scale down the fish and then add everything together. Um, so here we are. All I've got is uh, Jamaican allspice. Allspice is not all spices, it is called allspice. Some uh, black peppercorn, some kosher salt, and then a little bit of paprika. That just works itself together like that. Real simple. Tamarind, our ubiquitous tamarind. Uh, almost every equatorial island or country has tamarind growing, and it is a remarkable pod that has a citrusy complexion to it. We use it for all sorts of things here. It's just really dynamic. Um, acid, we gotta get some acid in here. So I'm using rice wine vinegar. You can use um, almost any type of vinegar you like. I just like the complexities here. And it's got, a, it's got great balance and a kind of a mildness to it that certainly white doesn't have or apple cider is not indigenous to the island. So um, this works in my mind because the, the Asians, the Chinese in particular, had a huge impact on every Caribbean island as they built the railroads. And along with that came some of their foodstuffs, along with rice wine and rice wine vinegar. So we got that going in here. Uh, now the time for the chili peppers. Uh, this is Jamaican, so I'm going to be using some scotch bonnets. And I'm going to be using some habaneros. You can use any or none of the above. Um, in my mind, though, it is a Jamaican dish. And Jamaica does mean to me complexity of flavors and heat. And we're still going to get the heat from the Scotch Bonnet and the Habaneros. Without the annoying things like the Carolina Reapers or some of those just idiotic chilies that are so hot that they can cause cardiac arrest in some people. Um, and really just kind of screw you up. So we stay away from that. We're looking for flavor, complexity, and balance. We're not looking for things that are so hot that they cause blisters on your tongue. I like jalapenos a lot. And I want to get some of that on here too because... It's not just the aforementioned heat we're looking for. We're looking for some balance on the front side before you get the habanero and before you get the bonnets. Now, again, sometimes we take the seeds out. Sometimes you leave the seeds in. This is the way I've had it time and again in Jamaica. I like to just have that, that same rustic kind of complexion of the thing going on. I've had it with and without onion. I think onion belongs in this dish. We're also going to get some other uh, peppers into here away from just the chilies because I want to get something that is going to be somewhat neutral. So at the moment what we've got right here are the jalapenos, scotch bonnet, habanero, and a red onion. I'm going to mix this in with everything that we put in here before. This is going to set up pretty nicely. Lastly, take a little bit of ginger. If you want to get uh, other peppers involved in this and you got a real affinity for bells or something of that nature, well, you go right ahead and do that. Uh, this is fresh ginger, 
Ginger is a rhizome, it grows in the ground, and it has the skin on the outside. You should take the skin off. You don't have to get all the skin off, get most of the skin off. And often people don't think about ginger as being Jamaican. They think about something more Pacific Rimmy, they think about India, they think about that. But the reality is anywhere that it is equatorial, the conditions are right for these rhizomes to grow. And you think about things like dark and stormy cocktails, well that is made with the fine rum and with ginger beer, not ginger ale. So ginger beer is made from ginger. It's gonna have just really wonderful flavors going on with it. I wanna get some oil in here as well. So extra virgin olive oil is my olive or my oil of choice for most cookery. And now it's time for the citrus. So I got uh, half of a lemon here. We're gonna get the lemon in. Again, like always, roll your citrus first. Squeeze our lime. Oops. All right, so chili peppers are in, citrus is in, our spices are in, a little bit of rice wine vinegar is in. Mix this up first, and we're gonna be cooking with this, but right now it's gonna set up a little bit, that off to the side, and next I'll be doing uh, the fish. But first, I've gotta scale this thing. We're gonna cut away for a moment so you don't have to see this, because some people are squeamish about that but we'll be taking scales off this guy. See you in a minute. Yeah, man. Welcome back. Here we are yet again at Shakers doing some fine Caribbean foodstuffs. Now, we had the uh, escovitch that was sitting up and lovely flavors are working together between the peppers, chili peppers, onion, and the spices. And of course, plenty of acid, both in acetic acid from the vinegar and citric acid from the citrus. Lovely. Now, induction or cooking with induction. Get a little bit of this fluid in here first. Then everything actually is all gonna go together anyway. About halfway through the process, I'll take out some of the solids, put those on the sides, so they maintain some texture. But I wanna get this hot. And after we get it hot, we're gonna take our fish, which uh, Brianna just uh, came over here and scaled for us. And uh, I'm going to rinse this first, and we'll be using that. All right, so snapper. Again, any white fish will work. If you want to leave it whole, that's groovy too. It's, again, make it your own and have it your way. This will be our way today. So what we're gonna do is, again, just start this off. And I've got all the components in here, the peppers, everything else, and I just wanna get some flavor off of those first. And let's say two minutes, I'm gonna pull those and, and get like half that away, put our fish in, and some of the food's gonna come off too, and I'm gonna cook it then.
Doesn't that just look pretty? All right. Skin up, skin down. I've seen it done both ways. It doesn't matter. We're going to move it around anyway. If you could be here to smell this, it is extraordinary. The allspice, the chilies all coming together with the citrus. It's just, just like being in the islands. It's beautiful. You can almost hear the music in the background as well. some more of the fluid off because we've got a lot going on here. I want to get as much flavor in here as I possibly could. But if you have too much fluid at some point it's going to actually impede the cooking as well. If you want to just marinate the meat, you can do that. Take your fish, you put that in your solution, let that set up for an hour ahead of time, and just blast the sauce with, with olive oil. I've certainly seen that done time and again. We've done that here as well. Um, but this is more akin to what I've had done, uh, both up in Falmouth and uh, down towards the grill. So the meat's cooking rather quickly. It's got two different things going on. It's naturally the heat that's taking place. It's the hot fluid that it's in. It's also the citric acid, because the acid is also is cooking pretty nicely too. This dish should be served with uh, typically like plantain, something of that nature, certainly rice, uh, a variety of things. Have it any way you want, of course. It's your dish. So this is a great dish to uh, grill as well. So you marinate for 30, 40 minutes ahead of time. Toss it on your grill, flavorful. Your neighbors are all gonna be busting down the doors to get there. So I think later this season, as boating is really just beginning here in Milwaukee, we will get this uh, on someone's boat and do this on the water so you can see what that's like. Here we are through the magic of television. We spread this along a little bit for you because nobody just wants to watch paint dry or fish fry. So here we are. We are pretty long with the process and we are nice and flaky on the inside. Just a touch more to go. But you see the real nice colors. And again, it's a shame you can't be here to smell this. It is extraordinary. Man, oh man. Again, you can just do this on the grill. You can do it strictly in, in olive oil as well or in any other oil you want. You don't have to do it this way. Uh, you have to marinate though. If, if you're gonna do that, marinate, get the flavors set up, get the acids to start to work. Just dynamic flavors. So this is uh, very similar to a Hawaiian dish as well that uh, is opaka paka. It's a different type of, of, this is a red snapper that's more of a pink snapper, uh, snapper rather. Uh, there's a variety of different things you can use and do. 
Uh, any whitefish really is extraordinary with this. So here we are. Again, we would uh, typically do this with plantain or rice. You could do this with either or neither. Something just like that. I hope you enjoy. This is a snapper escovitch, Jamaican style at Shakers. Cheers. Cheers.